I saw a skinwalker. I was nine years old and I was laying on the floor with my childhood dog. We were in the dining room and I had the lights off because it was nighttime outside and if you lay on the floor and stretch out, you can look out the sliding door and see the stars. I just wanted to hang out and stargaze with my dog. Everything's calm and quiet. My brother's all the way down the hallway playing video games and my parents are in the living room. If my mom's not there to cause a scene, then the other side will take care of it. They're watching TV two rooms over, but I hear footsteps. I immediately turn over and now I'm facing the hallway because I want to see who's coming. I'm assuming it's my brother. That's when a shadow figure appeared at the entrance to the hallway. The shadow figure is just standing there and it's not moving and it looks like it's about the height of a grown man until it hears me speak. When I say who's there, all of a sudden it shrinks down on itself onto its hands and knees about the size of a little boy. And the little boy turns and looks at me. I can't make out its face or its clothes. So I just go, oh, it's you, thinking this is my brother messing with me. For about three seconds, me and this shadow figure, this shadow boy, are staring at each other. The whole time, it doesn't say anything. I'm thinking, why is my brother not saying anything? And as the seconds pass, I start to realize that's not my fucking brother. The moment that clicks, I jumped up left my poor dog and sprint to the living room. Of course, my parents don't believe me. They think I'm just seeing shit. I stayed in the living room for an hour until I finally had the courage to run and turn on the hall light. The hall light being on gives me courage to step into the dining room and turn that light on. I'm standing in the exact spot that the shadow figure was as it crouched down and obviously the figure's gone and my dog's laying there like nothing happened. Then I go down the hall and I knock on my brother's door and I make my way in. I ask him, hey, were you just in the dining room an hour ago? and he denies it. No, I wasn't, get out of my room. At first I didn't believe him because we are prone to pull pranks on each other, but then I realized he's sitting under two layers of blankets, he's in the middle of a fable campaign, and his other free hand is in a bag of chips. He hasn't left this spot in hours. And that's the end of the story. I never saw the shadow figure again. To this day, I can't believe that when I jumped up to run out that I didn't turn the light switch on. I ran past the light switch. I could have flicked it on to see if the shadow figure would have disappeared before my eyes or if it wasn't there at all. But I didn't. Little me ran for the hills. And I think the reason it shrunk down to a, a child's form was to trick me into thinking it was another child. You know, when we're kids, our third eyes are open more. You know that close as you get bigger, unless you're a medium, then it stays open. I think that explains why I was the only one that saw it and why I haven't seen another one since. An SK story time. And also my mom is convinced that the tree behind me is extremely haunted. Let me know if you guys see a face while I'm telling the story. For the sake of the story, let's call him Travis. So Travis usually makes his way home around 5.30 p.m. after school. On this day, there was a meeting after school. One and two, he also got detention. So he didn't end up making his way home till like almost 7.30, which meant that it was already getting pretty dark out. He's out there trying to make his way home through the woods. He has a flashlight. It's literally the beginning of any type of scary movie. As he's walking along, he gets to a very heavy wooded area. He can see his house from a distance when he then spots it like to the left. This thing was about seven to eight feet tall. It was like peach white colored and just sitting on all fours. At first he thought maybe it was some type of animal, but when he looked at it, he could see that it was in the form of a human, but it had no face. Travis had heard of SKs in the past, but never in a million years did he ever think that he was actually going to encounter one. His brain literally went into survivor mode. He decided to just run as fast as he could to get away from this thing. As he's running away, he hears a whisper literally right next to his ear saying his name. At this point, Travis is having a full-on panic attack. The fact that this thing knew his name completely sent him on the verge of he doesn't even know how to describe it. Once Travis made it to the porch of his house, he broke down and started crying uncontrollably. Once he made it inside, he shut the door and has not seen it since. So okay, so I thought of a new series, right? Um, on the res, you have quite an experience. Like, I have a lot of skinwalker stories. And you know what? You know, you know where this is leading. I'm gonna tell those stories to you guys, right? So, buckle in, grab your blanket, your Pendleton cup of tea. Make sure your blinds are closed, cause let we're it, it's gonna get real. So my Nolly told me this one right, and this happened in okay, and she's telling me this in Navajo right, and you know when they tell stories in Navajo, it gets deep right. Okay, so someone was walking back home right after a ceremony, and it's dark. Okay. 
they're walking back home, and you know, they're kind of tipsy, you know, they're drunk, and they're walking on the highway, and there's this light post, one for miles, the only source of light, in the middle of nowhere, and all of a sudden, he hears someone's walking behind him, so he turns around, and you know what he sees? He sees a yeti. If you don't know what a yeti is, it's a yebiche, okay? And the yeti starts talking to him in Navajo. And when it's done talking to him, he's like, he's in shock. He's so scared, like he's frozen. He collects himself and he's like, he starts getting mad at it. He's like, get out of here. Whatever you're telling me is not true. You're not even supposed to be here. Get the fuck out of here. He's like, go back to where you came from. He's like, whatever you're telling me is not true. And like, he starts praying and then he closes his eyes and he's like, this isn't true. Whatever you're telling me is not true. Go back to where you came from. He's like, whatever it is that you're telling me, I hope it doesn't come true. And he passes out. He passes out. And he wakes up. He looks around. It's gone. The yeti is gone. And he collects himself. And on his way back home, he's rethinking his whole life. His whole, like, I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna stop. Like, I'm gonna take life seriously. And you're probably thinking, well, what did the yeti say to him? The yeti said, I'm gonna kill you. You're gonna die. You're not gonna go back home tonight. And the scary thing about it is they're not supposed to talk and they're not even supposed to say stuff like that. Yeah! Pa 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 pa! Dojenida!